All right, Ace back people. You see, it's a bunch of new units up here. Several of them are having problems. So I got to find out where I'm going to start at. It's a multiple unit car. Bunch of them having static pressure problems. Some areas are too cold. Some are too warm. Got a server room that was like 100 degrees. That's a mini splits control. So I think I read on the email where uh, number two and five is the most problematic. This is number five here, so I think that's where I'm gonna start. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, uh, let me see what this says. All right. Number one, some areas are too cold and some areas are too hot. GCBS had dozens of space heaters and fans throughout the hospital. This is their biggest challenge. Every morning, the entire east side of the hospital is above the set point. Number three, the humidity seems very high. Number four, the BAS displays a lot of alarms for every RTU. Number five, the BAS display that the RTUs reset on 7-7. Seven, seven. Number six, RTU two and RTU five are problematic. High discharge air temperatures. The, the two mini splits in the MRI equipment room are not functioning properly on 7-9. Observed around lunchtime, one was not on, the other was not blowing hot air. I mean cool air. The room temperature was recorded at 104 degrees and again at 120 degrees. The MRI vendor came out on site and turned the mini splits back on by using the remote control. So I don't know if it was just off or what. The temperature in the MRI equipment room needs to be monitored and alarmed. Options are to number one, tie the mini splits to the BAS or two, provide an independent alarm. The MRI room where the machine is located it needs to maintain a temperature below 65 degrees. Otherwise, the machine consumes costly cryogens at an exponential rate. Again, no need to respond. I mean, so they having multiple issues out here. Uh, seem like they say with all the RTU. So I was gonna start at number one and uh, just go in chronological order, but I'm gonna start at number, I think number two is right here. This is my first time coming to this site. Uh, like I say, these are new units. We did not install them, but I think they've been having problems uh, since the unit's been up here. Yeah, okay, this is number two. So, I'm gonna start at number five. And just do a random inspection. I'm gonna need to bring my four foot ladder. 
lot of condensate. All right, so I'm going to get situated, get my tools over here and start looking at this one first. on this one they say active stage is cool in one okay so now this one off must be satisfied Supply temperature 54 degrees. Supply app temperature is 57. Outside app temperature 25%. See, my notes don't really tell me. This is number five. This just says RTU number five are uh, problematic high discharge temperatures. Okay. I guess number one and I mean number two in rooftop number five got high discharge temperature. So on this one said my discharge temperature was like 54, I think. Fly air temperature 58, the set point is 54. I don't know why that compressor shut off right there. So I need to find out why it's calling for that outside air too. see my screen but I'm try to hook up RTU number five. So discharge air temperature is 58. Discharge air temperature set point is 54. Heat mode auto, occupant static. I have no alarms. Space temperature active, say negative 40. Space temperature local. Okay, the set point is 72. Okay, well it's saying my uh, space temperature set point is 70. I mean, well, active cell 70, 72. Okay, so fan speed at 100. 
outdoor air temperature is 87. So my cooling capacity is at 33%. That's because this, I'm trying to find an actual space temperature on here. So I'm gonna make sure these thermistors are reading right. Because from the looks of it, unit is working pro properly. So I don't know if they're having this problem in the evening time or what, but right now everything seems to be running fine. I was going to hook up my gauges, but we got a supply temperature of 58. I'm about to call the BAS guys and see if they uh, see anything abnormal about this. But everything looks good to me. They was complaining about high discharge temperature. That's 58. Let me check my return out temperature. Thing lead lag, but this circuit one, I need to find out when it's supposed to turn on. They got the smaller compressor running, but it may have some type of dead band on it where it gets to a certain uh, temperature above the active supply temp set point. I guess the bigger one turns on. Seventy seven on my return there. This should be fifty eight. New big crit drop today. Good day in Houston. Got the your music fan, Big Crit Drop, the new album. We got Russell Westbrook to the Rockets. Great day. That circuit one just came off. Let's 
see if that discharge air temperature is going to drop. It seemed like it actually went up. I was at 58, now I'm at 59. start dropping somebody right about that so the set point is 54 it seemed like uh, circuit one kicked on when it was about five degrees up above that set point starting to drop now I'm at 58 we'll take a peek inside this blower house Conversation on this thing. Try to see where I can see the rotation here. It rotates, right? It don't seem very cold. All right. So I just spoke with uh, BAS because. Um, uh, up here, I can't tell. These have fan power boxes associated with them. With that being said, I mean, I don't know what um, the space temperature or, or some of those boxes satisfied from up here. So some of them you might have the dampers closed. Some of them may be open. Uh, but he's going to give me a call back and let me know which ones are satisfied. Uh, because he said yesterday, all the boxes were set for, for the CFM because I can't see CFM up here either. The uh, fan power box are reading CFM, but I would have to go down there and actually plug into the fan power box to see the CFM. But they was all set for minimum and maximum uh, the same exact CFM. So let's say the minimum was, let's say 100 CFM and the maximum was 100 CFM. So they was open all the time. Um, look at my discharge, 48 now. So. Um, he's going to call me back and, and kind of let me know but he said it should be a lot better since he changed the min and the max on the fan power box like I said he's been an ongoing issue so this unit may be okay now uh, since he changed that min and the max Like I say, because as those fan power box open and close also, it should change my duct static pressure up here. And another issue, like I say, I don't know really what units are, uh, are they saying doing what, but I, I did hear somewhere that uh, some of the discharge temperature was getting too cold. As you can see on here, I got 49 and it's set for 54. So now I gotta figure out why it's going below 54. And the cool, cooling capacity is at 66%. It should be zero. There shouldn't be no compressors on if it goes below 54 degrees. I don't know if y'all can see this screen or not, but see my discharge air temperature is 50 and it's set for uh 54. It shouldn't go below 54. 
If it does, it shouldn't be at 66% on my compressor. That should be zero right now. So I'm gonna wait on this call and uh, see what we can find out. Uh, like I said, I think my next move is gonna be to find out why the compressor is not shutting down when it reaches the uh, target set point. All right. All right, it just sent me my scope of work and say service will need to change the start update to 16.19. Please have the tech check out the following units, RTU-101, Diagnostic Outdoor Air, temp, air Damage Not Modulating, RTU-5, this is the one I'm on now, Diagnostic Fan Failure, okay, and RTU-2, Alarm Relay Output Status, Fan Failure Diagnostic. So I'm on RT number five. Like I said, I, I think I uh, said some, yeah, something going on with that blower fan. But I, I think it's just the parameters. Um, I think it's just the parameters, though. Uh, da, 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 da. What's that is? Let me see. It's set for 100%. So I'm gonna have to get in there though and look at that VFD and see what they got it set for. All right. All right. I just know that this also, these filters are backwards. That could be causing a restriction itself. The top ones are correct but the bottom ones are put in backwards the airflow arrow should be going this way uh, for those that don't know the easy way to remember this when you got pleated filters the uh, the wires should always be facing towards the core This should never be facing toward the core, and that just helps so if, if it ever get uh, wet, the cores will, will help hold your filters up. Some simple as that could also be causing the problem, so put these in correct. That one is correct. small thing you gotta fix the small problems sometime first before you can move on to something else I think my next go I'm gonna see do I need to change those parameters on that BFD make sure all these are good I'm trying to get some more information. You see, that's at 50%. But well, my uh, my status is calling for 100%. So I just need to dig in and find out what is 50% and what they got the hurt set for. Right. I got it in hand, bro. I'm gonna go 
gonna turn it up a little bit. How do I get to the quick menu? How do I get to the quick menu? Right now my status, the, the arrow is on status. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm there now. I'm at uh, quick menu, it says TR150 wizard. Close loop setup. The uh, startup was done a couple months ago, um, so I, do, I have to enter all the remote information before I, I can change just the frequency. I will have to change the uh, I will have to input the motor information be uh, before I change the frequency. set up to do that. I'm 
1 to 23, or it said motor frequency, it says 60 hertz. Yeah, everything is already entered in. My uh, motor speed low is at 30 hertz. My motor speed high is at 100 hertz. So I guess it's just calling for 50 hertz. All right, my man, I so sure appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. We're gonna call this unit good. I spoke with uh, tech support and uh, everything seemed to be uh, working fine. All the fan power boxes are reaching the, the uh, desired set point. Um, so, like I said, we should be good to go on this one right here. The only thing I really found that the, the uh, filter was in backwards and and on the fan power boxes downstairs, they had the men and the max said the same thing. So the VAS changed that, uh, corrected that problem. Uh, so we should be good to go. Uh, so I didn't find anything specific on this unit, but I like everything working properly on this one. So I'm gonna move to the next one. All right, All right I'm hooked up to number two now. number one three is x style so i guess they got these things number wrong also i bet that, that was number two
Yeah, this is really gonna be number two here. Somehow they had got a number wrong then. So I need to jot that down. Trying to get out this sun. Let's see what we got here. All right, it's on to your number two now. Discharge air temperature is 64. It says zero alarms. Cooling capacity is zero. That we see when no, no compressor was running. It says no alarms. Okay, discharge air 65. This unit is not cooled in there. It says cooling capacity is zero. Why is that? Active override. All right, let's try to find out what's going on here. 54, 65, this unit should be on. Just turned on. Yeah. Like I said, I'm just taking notes, taking a bunch of notes of uh, what all I find. Try to find out why this uh, discharge temperature. Let's see if it starts dropping. Cooling capacity now 33%. So this should start dropping. Like I said, I can't look at the fan power box from up here. So here in a minute, I'll call the BAS team and uh, let me know if that zone is satisfying or not.
circuit two comes on first because it said cooler capacity at 33 percent so i think when it gets to 66 percent circuit one the big compressor turns on got an active alarm that's probably why I had that they had that uh switch bypass yeah see when I hooked that switch up I had a fan failure fan failure has had an alarm event So somebody uh, bypassed that thing. I know it has some, some water up in there. I kind of say. Let's see what happens if I take it back off. normally open it's normally closed so the switch is closed well I did open this up and that one is on the uh, normally closed circuit I need to figure out why that one going in alarm. I might have a bad switch, but it's showing normally open, normal clothes like it should be. So I'm going to dig into that. Alright, I'm looking into this. We could have a bad switch because it's supposed to be normally closed. Well, it is closed. That's normally open. See what happens when I do that. Close.
actually see if this stopped up or something. to turn the unit off and reset that alarm. Let's see if I can find this wire right here. Looks like a 101C. 10 101C. Oh, it should be hooked, hooked up to that uh, 101C. I don't see that 101C right there. All right. Into that static press switch, but uh, the lady with, with the uh, I don't know if y'all can see them over there. But they were another company. They the one that did the installs on here. But she was just asking a couple questions. Um, but I was looking to that static press switch. So that's that's what I need to find. And try to find out why it's not disconnected. But I think I remember on this one. Uh, this one that was reading discharge high temperature sensor. Let me see if I can open up my email. So go ahead and... and uh, Yeah, so on this one, uh, RT number two, alarm not, it says uh, alarm fan failure diagnostic. And I believe that's the re that's why they unplugged that switch. But I also was reading somewhere else that, uh, I think this is the one that was reading high discharge air temperature sensors. I don't know why I got that. Uh, just to blow a motor here. But uh, so I'm at 74 now, and I got 66 degree cooling. So I'm gonna see if this start. Uh, see if this start going down any. So once I get a 100 percent. Discharge air temperature should we can go down like 54. Make sure I got out. I still had a door open though. Now nah, this is probably the reason why I got I still got the dang door open. So we're getting a lot of outside air. Also, I need to put the door back on that one too. Cause I have high head pressure. I was trying to read that schematic. Let's see if I can pull it up over here. Alright. Uh, we put that static uh I had to press the switch where them hoses go to.
they don't have them wire labeled very good, but it seemed like it was like 101. That 103. This charge air temperature. Switch right there. It was normally closed, and it come in the red wire. Yeah, and that purple wire right there. So it's that's 102 and 101 C. It's, it's two of them in there. It's a CFS. Can't hardly tell. CFS, but it's one of these two. That's what I'm looking for up in there. This one says clog filter, so I know that's not it. I think that's just a fan proving switch. But it could be this one too, that cross that. I think this is it right here though. Let's see if I can read the wire. So it should be normally closed though. Purple wire 101C. Purple wire. Yeah, it's 101C right there. It says it should be normally closed. But when I hook it up, it's gonna go on the lawn. back on because it is closed so I'm put the door back on real quick and see if it shut off an alarm let's see go to capacity 100 discharge temperature is dropping I had the door open I did it, it went an alarm a lot faster than this. So maybe it went off an alarm because I had that door open. So that's a uh, fan proving switch. He's going to call it with bypass. It's RTU002. Fan proving. Switch by past. Seems like it's operating properly now. Cause I would think if you do bypass that and don't hook it up, the fan is still run, but uh 
that something happened with the fan and say it get grounded or something, I'm thinking those compressors will keep running because they think that the fan is on. So we need to have those hooked up. Discharge is 56. Discharge temperature set point is 54. So as long as it don't go out in the alarm since I hooked that uh, switch back up, we should be good to go on this. But I'm gonna uh, do my due diligence and uh, monitor for a while and see what we got. The last time, uh, like I say, when I hooked that fan proofing switch up, uh, it uh, went in the alarm right away. But now it doesn't seem to be going in the alarm. I don't know how well y'all can see this screen, but then I got shades on too, so it's kind of dark to me. But I don't know if y'all can see it, but like we were on a reset point. Like I say, so I'll monitor for a while and hope it doesn't go out in the alarm. And I will call the BAS guy, see if he can uh, read me some zone temperatures down there. All right. All right, real quick, I was just showing that these filters are in wrong also. Check these and try to hurry up and close this door before that uh, fan switch go off and alarm again. Alright, All right. this is RTU 101. You see discharge air temperature is 68. The cooling capacity is 100. And uh, I'm going to hook my gauge up to this one. The line not getting very cold. This charge uh, is hot. So I just want to check the pressures on this one real quick to see what it's looking like. This one also has multiple alarms. Space humidity active, return air temperature, diagnostic return air sensor, humidity sensor fail, alarm relay output status, and diagnostic TD5 palm fail. Got two said July 10th, one said July 4th, the other one is June 29th. So. Let's see if we can find anything. liquid line this is the discharge line you want to hook up to your liquid line so you check sub get the correct sub cooling
really when you I got the long clamps, but really when you got the app, you don't really need the long clamps. You really just stick your hose gauge it on the inside. Better shut the door. Go to pressure, go to quick start. Alright, once I pierce the valve, this is my suction, it'll read. got it mixed up so I need to and that is my suck so I need to assign these so I gotta figure out how do I assign get rid of my suction 146 so I said unassigned That's correct. The reason I'm high because I got this door open on the high side. T1 is my suction. When I put my door on that 416, should go down. There you go, see, already going down. Low temp. degrees super heat
be skipping when a wire is going up there. It should be pointed toward the core. I believe it's cooling correctly, but Let it run for a while. Let's see if that uh discharge temperature read different. I just had to throw up it's read 75 now. So my pressures are pretty good. About 97 degrees out here today. Sub cooling is kind of low. Let it run for a while, see what it do. I think we're getting good airflow. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna monitor this one for a while, see what we got. Said something was going on with these dampers, also. I think they just installed these. See if I can get it through there without cutting it. Supposed to be going through here like this. And then what? And this piece right here was supposed to be holding this like that. I should have something to try to mount it. 
Let me see if I can find something. So it's supposed to be a little rubber piece that this thing fit through and kind of leave it snug. But I can, can't find it. And so I did find this little washer. It's going to be a little bit too big, but I'm going to see if I can make it work just to keep it kind of snugged in there. Try to order that piece. See if I can reuse this. Yeah, cause that ain't gonna really work there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come up with something. Tape it down for now. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting that, so I really don't have the tools with me to do what I need to do. I'll probably get a little piece of tape and take that down. Let's see what about that? Temporarily fixed anyway. using my phone now but uh like I say I took that armor flex off that uh what that supply at 10% was when I first got here it was 68 and the unit only been running probably like five or ten minutes and, uh, so I really it was 61. Uh, like I say this panel here needs some insulation on the inside but I just put some self tappers to try to close it up real good uh, 